Good morning all. For a little while now I've been saying that I'm going to build a variety of different lithium-ion battery packs using this Vruzend plastic end cap system and uh, so far I haven't done it. Today I'm going to start but it's going to be a little bit of a cop-out. It's not going to be a, a multiple series pack, it's just going to be four cells in parallel and I'm going to marry them up with this which is a little power bank circuit board. Let's open it up. Yes, this thing, let's take the battery out of the way just for the moment. Um, it's got a very cute little <laughs> three digit LED. I think that'll probably show percentage. Um, a touch plate. It's also got USB-C, but I've discovered that that's not an output. So it hasn't got anything clever like power delivery. It's only uh, for input, for charging. USB micro B and a couple of USB A's um, for output. So all this is going to be is going to be a block of four uh, cells. This sort of soldered with thick wires onto these two pads onto the batteries. It's going to be a power bank. So let's get building. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip this block apart. I built this with deliberately uh, poor quality cells in this position number three, I suppose it is. Um, but I don't really want to pursue that, so I'm gonna strip this apart. Let's take the main connector off, which is this uh, 2.1 millimeter thing. And then I'll remove the active balancer and all that kind of stuff. Now, I worked out a way to assemble these Vruzend end caps. Uh, in an old video, so I'm going to watch that video back. When I watch my videos back, I tend to watch them on Odyssey now because watching them on YouTube triggers the adverts and that's a problem because you're not meant to watch your own videos and let the adverts run. Uh, so yeah, I watch them on Odyssey. So I'll link to that video on Odyssey. Uh, that means you can watch that video where I built this uh, pack. Oh, these have come on because <laughs> I've taken that wire off. Um, yeah, with no advert. And then uh, there's this JST 2-pin, which is across the ultra fire cells. I have absolutely no memory of why that's there. Perhaps watching the uh, Odyssey video back <laughs> will tell me what that was for. One thing I do remember is that the bolt that runs right through the middle of a block of four holds the end caps in to stop them sliding out and uh, disconnecting from the cells. So looking at this, if I take off those two bridging strips, then I can separate these two. In fact, let's do that. So that'd be these four nuts. Taking off those two strips. So last nut, this is, uh, all safe voltages, of course, we don't need to worry about protective equipment for these voltages. Uh, let those strips fall off. And yes, I remember now the um, coating, whatever the plating is on this, fragments away. You get lots of little bits of um, plating fragments. So these two should just slide apart, and they do. Now to break it down any further than this, I need to take that central bolt out. Now, in fact, I only need uh, one half of this. So I can put that to one side. I'll use this one. But what I want to do is rearrange this so that all the positives are at one end and all the negatives are at the other end because this is going to be a, a 4P, four cells in parallel, but just one in series. So it'll be a 3.7 volt nominal voltage battery pack. Right, that's all the nuts and the bridging strips off. So we've just got the stud ends. Uh, the next thing I need to do is take the central bolt out of this group of four. So I'll put a little chubby screwdriver on that end, flat blade on this end, because you simply cannot just use a screwdriver one end because the other end just rotates because it's tight. So let's get that screw out, I'm trying not to uh, short things out as I go. And then I can push the barrel bolt out just with a Phillips screwdriver obviously one where the shaft fits through the central hole 
and that's it. Now the ends will slide off the uh, cells, but also at this point I should be able to slide half this pack from its neighbour and half that from that, and that brings me down to the individual cells. So for a 1S4P pack, I need all the positives at one end, of course. And now I've got to try and remember the most efficient way of sliding these together. Looks like it looks like what I did was I had uh, on one end slots and on the other end dovetails. Um, but that looks like that will slide together. Yes, and I seem to remember you do that twice. Uh, yeah, that seems to go like that. And then I'm going to have to slide all of this together. Yes, I think I can do that like so. Yeah, that's it. All my positives one end, all my negatives the other. I suppose I, I could have just slid them off and just checked these cells are the right way around. But they must be, because I must have done it right the first time. So now I can link with these strips, all the posits together and all the necks together. And another cross check, not entirely foolproof, but just check that all the printing on the cells is the same way around. Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, that hasn't gone bang. Uh, right, so let's start putting some uh, nuts on here. Just trying to work out the best way to do this. I think it's just to put that on the top and give it a couple of tiny fractional turns and then use this nut spinner. This nut spinner does make life a lot easier. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's all pause at this end, so I'm relatively safe. But one should be a little bit careful. Um, yeah, just because you can get the fast turns, which is where all the time is spent on this. Now, of course, one thing I didn't consider is whether all these cells are at the same potential. Um, would strapping them in parallel be a problem? Well, possibly you might get a bit of current if some cells were completely empty and some were completely full. But in order to pull the voltages together, you can do that with relatively little current. Now, of course, these also had the balancers, the active balancer on them, so they must all be pretty close to each other. So I don't think there's any issue with just simply sticking the uh, negative plates on and strapping these all together. It should be fine. I think that's probably um, one good reason for having an active balancer on a pack. It means all your cells are going to be well balanced. So I can't see any need to torque these up. I think just finger tight with this thing is going to provide enough uh, surface area in hard contact with other surface area to give me the current um, flow that I need. Now I seem to remember that these caps are rated for about 5 amps. If you um, double them up, theoretically 10 amps, and because I've quadrupled these, theoretically I could pull for 20 amps out of this pack. I don't think I'm going to attempt that, and in any case it's going to be a little USB power bank. So it's very unlikely to have more than, well these are 2.4, then at 3.7 volts we might be looking at about 3 amps. That should be fine. Right, the barrel bolt to ensure that the end caps remain pushed in as far as they can be. That's the purpose of the barrel bolt so that the ends don't slide off. Got to try and get that to go in. It has gone in. Put the other bolt in the other end and start screwing the two halves together with my two flat blade screwdrivers. Now you can guarantee that when you turn this screw or bolt, the other end rotates. So it's not pulling in and you absolutely need two screwdrivers to do this. Now I've been playing with um, ideas for mounting this. Uh, I've got a B minus pad there and a B plus pad there, so it's going to go that way round. And I'm thinking I'm just going to sit it at the end like that and use a stiff wire to come down onto here. 
Now in the original Vruzen kit they provided these and I didn't really have any intention of using these because I was going to use little ring terminals for pretty much everything but actually I think these might work quite well for coming up here bending over and providing the access point for my wires so I might try that so put that special strip with this sort of soldered wire access end and I'm just wondering actually whether once this is bent over it might be better if I'm soldering to the back side of that so I think I might put it that way just for the moment see if that works let's get a couple of these nuts back on you can't put the nut in there it doesn't seem to work or well, maybe it will no because I think it drops in too deep doesn't work so that's on there now if I bend it over it will just it doesn't quite <laughs> work I wanted to try and make it as low profile as possible so that it just sits on the top there and then when I offer this up I can simply put a, a, a fairly a thick link of wire bridging across there so that it makes a kind of mechanical mount as well as electrical. It's going to work like that. I'd like to centralize that if I can. And I'm still thinking I can get B minus across to there, B plus across to just the tip of that one. That should work. I found a couple of these uh, thick wire diode clippings where I clipped the ends off diodes got lots of these so I'll, I'll, I'll solder those onto this board first and then I'm just going to touch this on there and make sure this powers up make sure the touch switch and that uh, display all works helping hands to hold everything in place while I solder it just wait for that to get up to 350 and then I'll solder on the B minus link onto this pad on the board and then I'll reset up the helping hands for the B plus link okay that looks good enough I put them out splayed out at a slight angle because I seem to remember it needed to come out slightly nice big fat blob of solder on there right let's try and attach this to the battery pack so just a trial run to start with B minus on blue B plus on red see if that display comes on it doesn't will it if I touch it it doesn't hmm interesting oh yes it does and it's saying zero now I wonder if it needs to be kind of trained pre-tin these uh, tops what? Oh, I switched that off, didn't I? Yes, I have a habit of doing that. Okay, let's try again. Tin the top of that. See if it'll take the solder. Should do once it gets warm enough. Oh, it's struggling a bit. It's just taking it, but I think I might press and hold the booster it should push it up to I think 420 see if that uh, does a better job yeah it's just reluctant to take the solder this one slightly further back I need to get that really hot before it'll actually take the solder but it has so that's worked yes that didn't really work because as soon as I heated this up to solder it it just fell off this board I think I might actually resort to hot glue now hot glue this as close as I can get it to the position I want and then run some thinner link wires across well in the end I found these very tiny 1.7 millimeter screws and my old <laughs> drill which looks like it's got a, a one mil bit in it I think or possibly a one and a half and I drilled through uh, the studs here these little supports and uh, that just about spans 
the distance across the holes here and the, the screws fitted through the holes that is loose but I will uh, first put these links across which will strengthen that and then I might put a couple of dabs of hot glue in under there just to further strengthen it but let's get the connections on next and uh, yeah here it is here's my little power bank uh, with the wire links now soldered on it's always quite hard to do that because you've got to get a lot of heat while being very precise with your pliers um, but it works touch the touch switch and it shows flashing zeros not quite sure why let's connect it to another power bank and try charging it up so USB micro B in there yes it's rather a thick cable this one let's plug it into this power bank and see what it does ah it flashes zero so presumably we need to go through a full charge and possibly a discharge cycle for this um, percentage meter to calibrate itself but uh, yeah I'll just leave it on charge and uh, see what happens now just put my DVM on here while it charges so that we can see where it is yes I can see why it's saying it's at 0% down at 3.4 volts uh, depends of course where the little controller chip on this uh, power bank board deems is a uh, zero, zero state of charge it could be 3 volts, could be 3.3 volts uh, yeah it's interesting, I don't know but we'll watch that go up or I'll watch it go up, don't expect you to watch it and uh, I'll now wait till this is fully charged should be about 4, 4.1, 4.2 so while this is doing it, I thought we'd take a look at some of the chips on this board. Can we see that one? A little bit tricky. Oh, and I've got a 1 on here at 3.55 volts. Now I'm just printing out the data sheet for the little charging chip there. Uh, it's got some quite interesting information. Well, this one is an XB8089G, but I've just noticed that the overcharge voltage is 4.425, which is pretty high. Uh, the overcharge release voltage, now I assume that means that in order for it to start charging again, this thing has to fall to 4.25 volts. So this chip is very aggressive on the upper end voltage. Over discharge voltage 2.4, that's quite low. This one, uh, the D version, is 2.5 and it's much more um, accommodating on the upper end of the voltage, 4.25 and release at 4.1. But back to this one, um, it will drain the cell to 2.4 volts and then uh, and cut off at that point. And then when the cell recovers to 3 volts, it will presumably allow the, um, the discharge to happen again. SOP8, which is what we've got, uh, 9 amps overcurrent threshold, but that's interesting because the diagrams, oh where are the diagrams? Yes, here are the diagrams on page 2, SOP8, now they don't show any sort of overcurrent detection, so I'm not quite sure what it means here by um, overcurrent threshold, 9 amps on resistance, uh, and all that whether to support 0 volt charging I've no idea what that means because it's a simple chip which you put the battery across uh, VDD and ground and then your charger negative comes in on VM so maybe if you go over 9 amps of charging well that's certainly not going to happen here because it's USB um, this thing would shut off perhaps that's how it works Right, this chip, um, which appears to be the main controller chip, there's a chip underneath actually, uh, lots of pins on it, but they all seem to be rooted up to the display. So I think that's some sort of microcontroller which is driving this uh, little display. So this chip on the top, the main charge controller is, if you can read that, something's getting quite warm and I think it's this 8205A MOSFET here, that feels quite warm, mm, maybe I'll get the thermal imaging camera out. 